Hello everybody, in this video I'll show you how to make a module replaceable coil for your coil gun, coil like that for example. Uh, if you haven't seen the video explaining the overall process in details, please watch it. It uh, named the coil construction. Uh, there's a link in the description, please watch it first. And when you're done, go ahead with this one. Because uh, here I'll show you in detail, step by step, how how it actually done in practice. Step number one. I'm gonna put uh, a ring onto the stick to protect uh, the epoxy and uh, the whole coil from sticking uh, to, the, to the metal uh, uh, case of uh, winding machine. I'm gonna use this uh, paper tube with uh, scotch uh, tape over it. I'm gonna put uh, a petroleum jelly or simply Vaseline inside here. I'm gonna lubricate it from inside so I will be able to take the coil with this inside ring back uh, uh, from the machine. So I'm lubricating the ring inside. I'm gonna put a lot of petroleum jelly to make sure it, uh, the paper absorbs it. So the petroleum jelly will stay inside, will no go, not go out. Then I'm putting this uh, protection ring onto the bare metal of a stick, like that. Step number two. I'm putting two paper rings, which will protect uh, the coil. This insulation rings will uh, protect the coil wire from uh, any other elements. will work like an insulator later on. So here I'm putting them. And I'm um, finishing assembling the machine by screwing the, uh, the nut onto the position. Okay. Now I'm going to precisely adjust the gap to make sure it's 14 millimeters exactly is what I need. A half a turn is required for half millimeter change, I think, something like that. Okay, 14 millimeters. Then I'm gonna fasten this. Let's close the screw. So that I don't have three hands. Three hands will be helpful. Then I want to make sure the screw is jammed, so the whole construction will not disassemble when I will be winding a coil. After it is adjusted and fastened, I want to make sure that the gap is precisely 14 millimeters. I'm going to check it again. Fourteen point. One, two. Well, good. Step three. I'm gonna prepare the wire. I straightened it up to the whole my apartment. Uh, I took around like uh, maybe 20 meters of wire. And now I'm gonna go over it, stretching it out to make sure it's. Uh, uh, it's straight without any curves on it, so I'll go over the wire. Well, over the wire. First step: I need to insert wire inside this uh, little hole in the nut, which goes here. So I know the hole starts from somewhere there, and I have to put wire inside, stretch it out a little bit, and hold the corner of the wire over here. I'll try to do that. Will take either a few seconds or maybe a few minutes. Yep, the hole is easily found, so I'm putting wire inside there. It goes through the hole. It's uh, it is insulated by a piece of plastic tube from uh, sharp corners of uh, metal, so the wire will not be damaged. I'm stretching a little bit, like. A Maybe 10 centimeters of wire, it's just a waste of wire will be. 
and I'm pulling it over and to make sure it will not be pulled out of the hole I'll fasten it with uh, hot glue I don't want to use a pistol I just want to use a lighter, it's easier making it hot and gluing it up like that this will hold thing in place well now I believe I'm ready to wind as I won't be able to show you the whole process of winding with epoxy apply appliance and all the stuff I'll just show you um, just like uh, education for the educational purposes uh, the way without epoxy so you can actually see how the, the, this is gonna go so I'm stretching out the wire to make sure it's bended right in, in this uh, little corner where the wire sticks out so here it's pulled hard now and I'm using the stick to align the wire to the wall of a washer and I keep winding it like that until I come to the point where the turn starts so here's it I keep it uh, pressure to the wall of a washer and I bend it and at the second turn to go close to the f beginning of first turn I don't know if, if you can see that but there's a bend a uh, corner like, like, like a curve right here when uh, the wire or uh, the first turn ends and the second one starts here so the first turn uh, is touching the, that washer and the second turn starts right here and being pressured to another turn so I keep winding it like that the second turn goes I'm pressurizing it to make sure it's uh, touching uh, another wire to, to ensure the high density winding and here's the bending point again so I'm pressuring it hard and then bend it over and the third turn goes and I'm going like that up to the end and at the end I'll show you what's gonna happen at the end in the next I finished the first uh, demonstration layer and here is the uh, last turn I'm, I'm having here and uh, the first turn of the second layer actually so I have a little gap left between the last turn of first layer and the washer there is a less than a half millimeter gap if I would have a long nail I can put a nail inside there insert it between the coil and the washer so here I'm going with the first turn of a second layer it goes it fits into that gap but not completely so it's sticking out but still it kind of uh, fills the gap so here's the first layer of a second, uh, first turn of the second layer goes, and the second layer goes in a gap between uh, two last turns of the first layer. So the first layer is the hardest one because it uh, actually makes a shape uh, of all subsequent layer. So the turns of the first layer has to be very precisely adjusted like each turn so I'm working with this stick to push it to align it in the way it should be and all the subsequent layer will go into the gaps between turns of first layer and each subsequent layer will actually follow the same way of winding so the winding of uh, next layer is much easier you just turn this thing and hardly you even need to align any of the layers it will just go by itself so I will not continue making a video of it because uh, I need to put epoxy so I need to all my hands available and I need to concentrate on it it's gonna take like a half an hour or something Whew, I just finished winding that coil 
So here is uh, how the device looks like right after the wind. You can uh, see that I fastened the end of wire which was cut in here uh, with uh, plastic uh, glue, the hot glue, so called hot glue. Yeah. That's how it looks like. Tomorrow when the uh, epoxy will harden, I'll make a video about uh, taking this thing off. So here's the narrow past and the epoxy got probably the full strength. So I am uh, I think I'm able to take uh, the coil out of the winding machine. So the first step is to remove the plastic glue from here to release the, this free end. Like that. Second step I'm gonna take the screw off the screw which holds the nut hmm. screw is going on and as we remember we have uh, those nuts insulated from uh, winding uh, part by uh, scotch tape so Epoxy shouldn't stick to the nut, and we should uh, be able to um, to take the nut off, to screw it off without any problems. Let's see if it's gonna happen. Unfortunately, there is some problems. It sticked a little bit, so I have to take a knife and probably take some epoxy out of the junction so probably it sticks from outside so I have to clean this this part so I scraped a little bit of epoxy out of uh, the metal from here and now it got easily to unscrew the nut part so when I was uh, winding the coil, probably some of the glue uh, got out of, uh, of the winding and trapped onto, uh, onto the nut, making it impossible to screw it out. So I scraped out with a knife carefully, not to uh, damage the wire. Now we have a nut off, and we have coil sticking to the machine by inside part, which is uh, uh, pressurized by all the coil turns so it will be hard to remove the coil and it's unavoidable so how can we help to take the coil out is uh, to send the screwing part to prepare it a little bit like sand it, lubricate it maybe uh, to make sure when the coil will slide out it will not damage uh, the inside part so to take it out I'll knock it a little bit on a hard surface. Here how I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna hold this uh, part of the machine by a coil inside here and when I knock it the coil will slightly slide to the bottom. As you can see the gap appeared here. That means coil st starts to slide. It will take uh, some more knockings. As you can see, gap getting bigger and bigger. Few more knockings, and we're gonna go through the thread part. And here is the result. I got a coil slided out of the machine. Uh, whatever was inside, like a paper, uh, lubricated paper and uh, plastic, it uh, come out, uh, it was sticking to the, uh, to the case of the machine. 
assemble it uh, were right here on the screwing part it's like like stick there and uh, the coil by itself slide it out finally what I was inside uh, I cleaned it uh, the plastic glue from here I removed but as you can see the coil stays in shape because of the epoxy uh, what we can do is to put an insulation uh, some insulation tube over the ends maybe covered with uh, insulation tape from outside that will help to hold the wire the single piece of wire as you can see doesn't stick well with epoxy to the coil so it will be good to glue it up I think uh, the scotch tape will work well that's the result I hope you will be able to do the same as this uh, coil can easily slide to the barrel can be easily removed from a barrel if something happened like insulation uh, breaks and uh, um, any other accident that happened to the coil or maybe you would like to uh, exchange the coil with uh, another one wound with different diameter different turn numbers uh, whatever so thanks for watching and good luck